Gandalf catching up on email? A Zoom meeting kill switch? It's episode 1 of Internet Levity. Chances are you've seen this image before. This Windows XP background is the most viewed image of all time. And now you can visit the site where this photo was taken through Google Maps. Link in the description box. Here is the first photo ever uploaded to the World Wide Web. Tim Berners-Lee, inventor of the World Wide Web, used this computer as the very first web server. Since you started watching this video, 5.2 million Google searches were served, 5.1 million YouTube videos were watched, and 550,000 tweets were sent. If this sort of information is your thing, visit internetlivestats.com and watch the numbers go. All that talking has made me a little hoarse. What? You don't find that Amusing? Okay, I get it. These puns are pretty bad. Let's move on to a montage of perfectly timed photos from perfectlytimedphotos.com. That was pretty neat. Speaking of pretty neat, the National Science and Technology Medals Foundation, abbreviated NSTMF, has an online gravity lab that allows you to create your own gravitational system where you can visualize how massive bodies wrap the fabric of space-time and interact with each other. Start by creating objects and see how they interact with each other. Notice how these objects wrap space-time. That wrapping is what results in the apparent force that we call gravity. Or at least that's what Einstein's theory of relativity postulates. As you can see, these bodies started moving towards each other, collided and broke up into pieces. With just the right masses and distance between each other, Two massive bodies could start revolving around each other, forming what is called a binary system. Fun fact, roughly 50% of the stars you see in the night sky are part of binary star systems. Let's see what else we can do here. My attempt to create a secondary binary system was unsuccessful. Here goes another attempt failed yet again. Whoa, whoa! Looks like we have a system with a tiny mass revolving around a massive body. That system seems to have drifted out of view. That's because its velocity was higher than any local force holding it back. But look what we have on the screen right now. We seem to have a binary system in the center with a smaller mass revolving around it. I imagine this is what a solar system with a binary star system at the center would look like. I created another massive body that affected the orbit of the smaller mass and the smaller mass was swallowed up by one of the system's massive bodies. 
that last massive body I created seems to have caused this universe to reach a critical mass and all the bodies I created collapsed into a black hole in the center. That was pretty cool. Props to the good folks at NSTMF for creating such an amazing experiment. If you enjoyed that, you may also enjoy the WebGL Globe open platform that lets you take your data and visualize it on a globe. I especially love this example that overlays Google search volume by language on a globe. Look how blue the United States is, while Europe is a rainbow of colors. The UK is unsurprisingly blue. On the other side of the globe, we see India. India has the second largest English speaking population in the world and a huge number of internet users. So this plot of India is quite surprising. I expected the blue to be denser than it is. Down under, you can see visual proof of what you may have been taught in school, that most of Australia lives in Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. The blue bars in the south going west to east correspond exactly with these regions. Back home in the US, notice how tall the bar is in the northeast. If you think about it for a second, that's not entirely surprising since those states up there are densely populated. But Florida has the second tallest bar in the country? I wouldn't have guessed that. Another surprising fact that comes out of this is how small the California bars are compared to the Northeast and Florida. Well, California is massive and has several medium-sized bars. I'm sure those add up to a single bar that's taller than what you would see in the Northeast. So it just shows how California has a relatively uniform distribution of internet and Google users than the Northeast where most of the internet and Google users are concentrated in a specific region. South America, almost devoid of blue. I see Spanish and Portuguese bars. Between the blue in North America and the amber and green in South America, you can see how the continents were divided between the English, Spaniards and the Portuguese. Look at Africa. It's shocking. Africa is a massive continent, more so than it appears on our maps because of the effects of the Mercator projection. It's big enough to fit the US, China, India, Japan, Mexico and many European nations combined. This projection shows how internet availability in this region is dismally low. Now back to India. Each of these tall bars show major metropolitan regions of the country. From north to south, those bars are Delhi, Mumbai and the southern IT hotspots of Hyderabad, Bangalore and Chennai. Remember. That was just an example of what you can do with this open platform. You can get the code for free and plug your own data into it to visualize it on a globe. That's it for this episode. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more internet levity and other assorted entertaining random audiovisual content. Thanks for watching and be safe.